good morning and happy Christmas, especially to those that I haven't seen or met over the past few days. And if I have seen or met you a number of times over the past few days, then, well, happy Christmas as well. It's the start of the Christmas season, and so it's great to be back again and to be able to say to you from myself and from Juma, a very happy Christmas. How have you spent your time? Has it been full of fun? Has it been a bit manic, perhaps? Has it been tiring? Has it been tiring and fun and exciting and all of those things? And it's been great to be with family and friends, or perhaps it's been great to be a little bit quieter. However you've spent your Christmas, and can I just say that we're beginning the Christmas season, so you are still spending your Christmas, however you spend it, I hope that you find the right balance of what you need, uh, what others need from you, because there is a balance to be had. Sometimes our family, our friends need us to, to step up, to step forward, or perhaps just to sit at a table and play a game, a game that um, they enjoy, passes their time and gives them a bit of fun over Christmas. This Christmas, certainly, I've been, again, very fortunate. <clears throat> so I have I have games to play, puzzles to manage <laughs> or to do. I've got lovely nativity sets and I have got books to read and sweets to eat and a little bit of refreshment there as well, just in case I need a, a spiritual uplift. It's been good weather-wise that people have been able to travel around, at least in, in this area. So, all in all, I hope that you have had some enjoyment I know that's not the case for everyone, so although I hope it for you, I know that that's not the case for, for some of you, for quite a few of you. Either your own illness, not feeling right, or the illness of family and friends around it just doesn't go away and doesn't praise on your mind and, and you want them to be well and to enjoy the day too. And sometimes it's more serious than that even, and there's other people who are, are struggling, struggling with their health, their family's health, but also perhaps with the cost of living, perhaps with not being able to heat the houses, perhaps with just being lonely and isolated as they are every day of the year and Christmas for them is no different. If that is you, then I pray God's blessing on you for Christmas. And I pray that somewhere along the way, you will find not a relief from the hurts because sometimes the hurts are not relieved that easily, but strength and courage and blessing from God to help you in whatever the challenges are. Christmas is a time when we are to remember those who are less fortunate than ourselves. A time to remember that not everybody is celebrating. And not just because they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God born in Bethlehem at this time, but because life is just too hard for them. So we are continuing to seek ways of helping. <clears throat> Warm spaces is one way of doing that. And although we don't advertise warm spaces in our church, when our church is open, <laughs> it's warm. And there are many things that happen in our church that you can just drop by, have a, have a coffee, have a tea, have a chat, have a refreshment, um, get some company. And last week we had our reflection area open because the last week before Christmas can be busy for some and, as I said, lonely for others if there's not anyone around. So there was a chance to come in and, and people came in to look at the reflection area. But we also were able to have a, a bit of a blether and a chat in the Hall of Fellowship and a cup of tea or coffee or whatever in a warm space. So this week too, the reflection area is going to be open from Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday mornings. Say 10 till 12. It might be open a bit earlier than that, but say 10 till 12. And it's a time to go through that reflection area again the pre-Christmas one, which is the post-Christmas one, because we are in that season of Jesus with us always. There's also be a wee reflection pamphlet for you to take away and um, to spend time on your own, perhaps. Um, if you don't have enough books that were given to you Christmas to read or enough magazines or enough good films on the telly, perhaps you'd want to do that. But it is also a chance to come and be warm, have company and a chat. So... Please do know that you're very welcome to come anytime, 10 till 12, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Thursdays. Also our bereavement group, which is much the same thing. People who need a chat and company and somewhere just to sit and talk. So that's, I hope, 
uh, an opening for some of you to come along. Maybe this week is, well, it's quieter than last week, perhaps, or you're building up to New Year. But if it is a little bit quieter, then perhaps you've got that time and stillness to think, I will just go along and stop and think. We're in the Christmas season. It's only just begun. It's only just begun. Um, Christmas season began on Sunday the 25th. And so I hope that we continue to keep that in mind and don't just move on too quickly. My presence, as I said, I got a lot of amazing gifts and a few new nativity sets too. One of these is this one. It's It hangs up. It's like a garland. It's got all the wonderful detail, amazing detail of the characters of Christmas. And it is just wonderful and beautiful. And that has been on my door, inside door, um, for the last while. And the glorious thing about this nativity, of course, is that you can be part of it. And you can be right in the middle of this amazing nativity. Because that's where we are. God came to be in the midst of us. And in that stable scene, as we imagine it, everyone's gathered around that manger. And Jesus is the focus. Jesus is always the focus. But the purpose of God coming, of Emmanuel, of the birth of Christ, the Son of God, God incarnate with us, is to help us to realise and realise afresh every day that the reason God came is because we are God's focus. That doesn't mean that we are entitled to everything that this world can offer and we are able to just have what we want. It means much more than that. It means that we, you and I, are loved by God. Now that's quite easy to say and it doesn't take much time to say. That you are loved by God. And because God loves you so much, absolutely, God was willing to come in the form of a baby in all humility and vulnerability and place himself through Jesus into our hands. So it is for us to be tender and to be gentle, but also to receive from that a strength and a courage and to take from that and with that, and to take that out with us, to tell others who really, really need to know. That no matter who else or not is in the house with you, you are not alone. God is with you. Not in a horrible, spooky way, big brother way, looking over you, seeing what you're doing, seeing what you're eating. But in the most glorious, tender, gentle, loving way. The world needs to know that. At watch night service, I was suggesting that we change we change our own worldview first, of course. We change from a worldview which tells us that greed and power will get what you need and what you want. That power and greed are the way to all the things that you really desire in life. And rather look at it from the worldview of Jesus, born in that stable in humility, a worldview of Jesus who welcomed shepherds and magi, who welcomed the outcast and the stranger. We need to change our view to that worldview and then work to change the worldview that is, is out there. Because I don't know if you've noticed or not, it's not working. It's not working for an awful lot of people. It's working for very few. And in fact, the few who think it's working for them probably isn't. God came to give us a new way of living. So this is the beginning of a Christmas season. The beginning, perhaps, of an opportunity for us to rethink, re-establish ourselves in that faith, re-root ourselves, ready because, well, 2023 is on its way. And we know from the past few years that we can't just cross our fingers and wish everyone a happy new year, health and happiness and all that. Because you know what? That's not how the world works. 
and that's not how the world is affected and changed by our wishes, it's by our words and by our actions, which stem for me from my belief and my faith. So it's a wonderful season of rejoicing and love and inclusion. Let's make that our worldview and let's make that the view that we share with this world. I hope that you can, perhaps if you're close enough, drop in for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning for a reflection area, pick up a pamphlet or for a chat. Come and say hello. I'll tell you what, bring one of your daft presents and we can have fun. Bring a game and we can share it. But most above all, bring yourself. Just for a chat. Just to think how we've got on over this past weekend. And just to imagine, perhaps, what life might be like if you took the worldview that was given at Christmas time. The worldview of our God, who loves us. Who loves you? Incredible. So, from Juma, who's lying sleeping, and myself. A very, very blessed Christmas season to you. And hope to see you soon.